All right. Good afternoon, students. Now that you're in grade 11 s &T, right? I should tell you that recently I contacted um, the person in charge, the technical guy in the country, and he said that we should continue with traditional grind until they're ready for um for AutoCAD, right? That's the one on computer. So for this year, they're not going to be doing AutoCAD. So that means that you guys, when you write CXE, you'll be doing traditional grind, right? That's the one on paper that you usually do. So no AutoCAD. So for this storm here, we'll have to um, move on with the SVA. But before I move on in the SVA, this is something that we have to look at before we move on to the SVA, right? You have to know how to do page preparation, or you have to know how to prepare a drawing sheet. And you also have to know how to do dimensioning. So I prepared a PDF, right? And in this PDF here, you're going to see how a drawing page has to be prepared and you're also going to see how dimensioning is done right so first things first in school we did title block right that was last term i did title block and if you can remember the title block has to be on the bottom right side of the page as it's shown here in the pdf right and you also have to write certain things in the title block. And last term, we went through all of those things that you have to write, right? Name, title, projection, drawing number, scale, etc. Right? All of them isn't shown here in the PDF. But last term, I went through all of the things that have to be included in this title block, right? But this is just something to show you how it would look like right so you can see that i have my title block here on the bottom right of the page right and you can see that i've written name title right you can see that it says isometric sketch projection since it's an isometric sketch it will be an isometric and drawing number one right since it's only one drawing i did it's going to be drawing number one right but if you had like two separate pages and you had like two drawings on them, then on the first page, you would have drawing number one. And on the second page, you would have drawing number two, right? And so on. If you get three drawings, you'd be drawing number three and so on, right? So first thing you're going to notice is that my page here has a border, right? See that my page has a border and the border is only drawn in pencil right it's not drawn with any marker it's not drawn with any pen it's drawn in pencil right and the measurement for the border has to be 15 mm i think this is something that i also said last time right the measurement for the border always has to be 15 mm right that's a must so Now that you know that the border has to be 15 mm, I want you to take note of how I've written these things in the title block, right? If you look at the first paragraph here, there on the PDF or the first sentence, it says the title block must be located on the bottom right of the page. Lettering has to be 5 mm height, right? So the size of each of these lettering is 5 mm. You see that, right? And what you're also going to notice is I have two lines here. And in between the two lines, you have the lettering. Now, the distance for the first line, right, going on to the second line is 7 mm. Right? 
Now you know you should notice that the lettering is kind of floating between the line, right? So that means that the five mm size of the lettering has to be between this seven mm space, right? So that's why you're going to have your lettering floating in between the two lines, right? And you might not be able to see it clearly on the PDF, but you can also see two very light lines in between the 7mm lines, right? So the light lines are actually the 5mm measurement, right? That's for the lettering. And you have to draw them light because obviously you got to do your lettering in them. You got to do your writing in them, right? That's why you don't draw them deep, right? So the only lines that are deep here are the 7mm space lines, right? So moving on, the PDF here, right? You're going to see that I did a little sample drawing here, and it has um, some dimensioning on it, right? So notice that on the dimensioning, right, you have arrowheads, and notice that all the arrowheads look almost the same, right? And they have to look, you have to make them to try to look consistent. They have to look the same because the length of the arrowhead is 3 mm, right? And you have to shade them like how they're shown here, right? And always the length for the arrowhead has to be 3 mm, right? And note that in the middle of the dimension line, right? That's the line with the two arrowhead. You can see that for the three dimensions I did there, you have the number floating above it, right? So the measurement for the number is 5 mm, which is the same as lettering, right? And it's also done in lettering style, right? So you can see that here I'm dimensioning a radius, right? See the stop part here? And since I'm dimensioning a radius, it would be capital R, and then you put the number, well, which is what the radius is equal to, right? So moving on, you can see that this image that I sent here has more examples of dimensioning, right? So something else you should take note of is the number always has to be above the dimension line, all right? So as you see for 95, the, the number 95 is above the dimension line. For 56, the number is above the dimension line. Now, if you look at these two dimensions on the left, where you have 61 and 29, right? They are at the side, right? But if you tilt your head towards the left, right? And you view it from that way, then you would see that the numbers are above the line. So for these side dimensions, you have to tilt your head towards the left, right? Only then would you see the numbers above the dimension line. And they always have to be above the dimension line. All right, so again, you can see that I've done some side dimensions here, right? And you can see that it's above the dimension line, all right? And something else I want you to notice is the dimension that I did for this part here where it says 10, right? Because 10 is a very small measurement, you can see that I have one arrow on one side and the other arrow on the other side, right? Since it's very small and it wouldn't be able to fit in that small space. And you would find that when you are dimensioning isometric projections, right, you'll find that the lines would be parallel to the side, right? See how this dimension line for 40 is parallel to this side being dimensioned? All right, so moving on to some 
points about dimension in drawings, right? You have various rules that you have to follow when you're dimension in drawings, right? So in this PDF, you have the rules, right? Extension and dimension lines are thin and continuous. So you can see that in the drawing that I did on the previous PDF, right? You can see that the, the dimension lines are thin in the right? They're not deep. So what are extension lines, right? If I go back to the drawing over here, right? You may not be able to see it so clearly on the PDF, but if you look at the dimension that I did for 40 mm here, right? You can see I have one line coming down like this, right? On one side, and I have another line coming down here, right? So that's what you call an extension line, right? And they also they always have to be shown when you're dimensioning. And usually, right, usually when you're dimensioning, the measurement for the extension line away from the drawing has to be 10 mm. You always try to have it 10 mm away from the drawing. But in some cases, you you may find that you're unable to do so. All right. So this part here, the second part where it says arrowheads are drawn as shown, and then they say on building drawings, a dot stroke or open arrow is used, right? Ignore that part because we're doing mechan the mechanical drawing option, and we only draw the arrowheads one way, which I showed you in the PDF, right? Small gaps are left between the extension lines and the drawing. You're going to see that just now when I show you the other drawing. Extension lines project slightly beyond the dimension line. Where possible, dimension lines should be located outside the drawing. The measurement in millimeters is always placed above and not touching the dimension line. You've seen that in the previous PDF. Vertical dimensions are always viewed from the right-hand side of the drawing. The symbol R is placed before a radius, right? That's the capital R. And this symbol here that you see in the PDF is used for representing diameter, right? So if I move on to this drawing here, you can see that you have the extension line. Right, if I just zoom up on this drawing and note that look at this part here with the extension line, you can see that there's a little gap there between the drawing and the extension line. Right, that's the gap that they're talking about, and you can see that all of the arrowheads for the dimension lines are the same measurement, which is 3 mm. And they have to be consistent, which means that they have to look the same. You can see that there's a radius 32 measurement here being dimension, right? And they use the capital R for the radius. And right below that, they're also dimensioning the diameter for the circle, right? Where they use this symbol for the diameter. And note that when you're dimensioning a radius, they use a half arrow like this. And when a diameter is being dimensioned, they use a full arrow like this, right? 